Rachel. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sometimes I admit to people that I can be a little socially awkward and anxious. How socially awkward and anxious, you might ask? Well, I'm so socially awkward, George Costanza told me to seek help. <laughs> I'm so socially anxious in crowds, I have a resting heart rate of coronary. <laughs> I'm so socially awkward, I made a date with myself to get to know myself better, and then I blew myself off to watch Game of Thrones instead. <laughs> I don't want to say anxieties ravage my social life, but my vibrator doesn't want to be caught using me. <laughs> in all seriousness, approximately four in 10 people suffer from social anxiety disorders. So that means six of you fuckers need to tone it down or leave it. <laughs> Even when I think I'm not being socially awkward, it just happens. My sex and love life, or lack thereof, are rife with great examples. From the very beginning, my virginity. Picture it, Minneapolis, 2003. <laughs> it's my first time being so far away from home and I'm there for 11 weeks. I have no friends, no television, and no distractions. I spend my nights walking around the city and going to bars or a gay club that features an amazing drag show. <laughs> One night I leave just early enough to catch the last bus. It's here I meet Ryan. We start talking. I think he's cute and charismatic, an amiable asshole, and I've always been attracted to those like a moth to a flame. <laughs> Soon, he and I are also talking with another young guy, Joe, who's more than a little sketchy. Before I know it, Ryan and I have agreed to give Joe some money and follow him to his apartment complex to get us drugs. What kind of drugs is never specified, but they would be drugs. <laughs> Good ones. Ryan seems up for it, and I'm up for Ryan, so I go with it, and we give Joe our money. We get off at his stop and walk to his building. He tells us to wait outside and he'll come out with our drugs. <laughs> An hour later, Ryan and I are still startlingly sober. Sober enough to realize Joe isn't coming back out with our drugs. And if he does, he might bring more trouble with him than we can handle. So we decide to leave. It's a long walk through the suburbs of Minneapolis to the nearest bus stop and it's in the driveway of one of the few houses without motion sensor lights that I throw away my virginity. There's no making out, no foreplay, no dirty talk. These concepts are foreign to me. In fact, there's absolutely nothing that may seem typical about what leads up to us having sex. Just a very matter of fact, socially awkward declaration on my part. <laughs> Say, Ryan, would you like to deflower me? <laughs> kind of old to be a virgin, <laughs> and I think you're super attractive and probably disease-free. <laughs> to which he replies, sure, Rachel, I've got nothing better to do till the buses start to run again. And look, there's a creaky, uncomfortable-looking lawn chair we can do it in. <laughs> Something like that. I won't bore you with the exhaustive details of our seven minutes of passion. <laughs> Safe to say, by the time it's over, I'm sore, unimpressed, and beginning to think I've been scammed for the second time that <laughs> night. <laughs> and to top it off, I've got ring of fire stuck in my head for obvious reasons. <laughs> he asks if I had felt him come. Anyone familiar with the lies that men need to hear to feel like they've lived up to some porn star standard that exists in their own minds would have offered the expected response. But I innocently say, nope. <laughs> um, awkward? <laughs> and of course he doesn't ask if I'd come, probably because he knows my answer would have been, 
After that uninspiring dalliance, we continue walking till we get to the bus stop. <coughs> By then, the sun is coming up. Before I realize it, the words are actually coming out of my mouth. I fell into a burning <laughs> ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, 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 the ring of fire. <laughs> Ryan asks what I'm singing, and I tell him. He asks why, and I tell him that, too. <laughs> Needless to say, I never see him again. <laughs> a few years later, I do find a more appropriate way in which to meet a potential love interest. I go on a proper first date. I meet Denise through a Craigslist ad, and it just gets better from there. <laughs> We meet in person at Union Square Park. She's tall, tan, and imposing, built like an Amazon or a brick shithouse. <laughs> her eyes and hair are dark, her face square and intelligent. She's just eaten at a McRestaurant and has some leftover McFries she doesn't McWant. <laughs> she suggests we feed them to the pigeons, and I think that's a great idea, as the place is all over pigeons. Kind of a sweet thing. Romantic, you might say. But out of nowhere, I get the bright idea to test my aim and see how many pigeons I can hit with French fries. <laughs> it takes several tries, but sooner rather than later, I've done it. The pigeon flaps and squawks in surprise. I turn to Denise, <laughs> expecting either applause or some other form of approbation. There's something very wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I'm never having sex with you. OK. <laughs> I've already had sex once, and I'm not impressed enough by the ring of fire to make it a habit. <laughs> but I figure I must have charmed Denise in some way though, as she does want to be friends. This is cool with me because despite my apparent indifference, I really do like her. One evening, we're riding back to Brooklyn from Manhattan. We get on the train and I grab the two seats by the window so I can see the skyline as we cross the Manhattan Bridge. Denise sits right next to me, squeezes past me to get to the seat directly next to the window. Oh well, she must really want to dig on the view, I think. So I, in what seems to me to be a very polite social grace, move to a seat across the car to give her some space. I am, of course, totally wrong, and she gives me this look as if I'm possibly the stupidest person she's ever met, and it's quite possible that I am. I wanted to sit next to you. Kind of getting the point, I quickly jump up and sit back in my former seat, and she leans against me with a little sigh. Huh, I think. And that's as far as that thought goes. <laughs> we get back to Denise's place in Brooklyn. She invites me up and shows me around. We sit on a couch and she turns out the light and cuddles up against me, wrapping her arms around mine with her head on my shoulder. She smells really nice and my body and brain are getting very confused. Finally, she sits up a little and kisses me on the mouth briefly. But, but I thought you didn't. I start to say, and she laughs, and asks me if I, kissed, if I ever kissed a girl before. I tell her, no, this is the first time, and she kisses me again, then again. I'm terrible at it, but she's really patient with me, even as I sit there, barely moving my lips, jerking my tongue around as if it's the arm of a slot machine. <laughs> I'm frozen almost stock still, like a deer caught in the headlights of a truck. <laughs> Eventually, Denise makes an annoyed sound and pulls my left hand up to her right breast and plants it firmly there. My arm and hand promptly go numb, and I just sit there with a mouthful of Denise's tongue and a handful of Denise's breast. <coughs> Fast forward to a few minutes later, and <laughs> as you might expect, I'm chickening out and going home. <laughs> Denise is disappointed, rightfully so. 
I'd frozen, almost completely solid, and hadn't thawed even a little. As I make my way to the subway station near her place, I kick myself repeatedly for my social anxiety getting in the way of getting my girl on girl on for the first time. Thank you. <laughs>